You said it's the seventh episode? That's my lucky number. So I already feel like this we're gonna be it's gonna be a good episode. Uh number seven on my road. I won't give out my address in case I have some stalkers. Uh, <laughs> I was out in the woods catching frogs, pretending I had an Australian accent because I was gonna be a naturalist, pretending that I was uh, also a river riding badass. <laughs> A lot of small businesses feel because they don't have the big budget, they can't do the big moves. Mm -hmm. Educating people on certain small things that they can do for their business to give it that bigger voice, they're, they're relatively surprised. Each client is their own entity, a diamond. Can you help me? <laughs> I can't, are you allowed to have a cheat sheet? Beg, borrow, and steal. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I think if you know how to take care of your, yourself and manage your time so that you're effectively doing so, carries itself into your business tactics. And healthy mind, healthy body. Okay, Sensei, let's uh, go. Sensei. <laughs> Is it weird to say that I actually feel oddly calm? I feel refreshed. I'm ready to go. But I know it won't be long like a bird without a song. Our feathered friends here. So I do have a pet. His name's Diego Von Fuego. Diego Von Fuego. The first appearance of a bird. He's bobbing. Bob with him, people. Bob with Diego. <laughs> when I close my eyes, I feel like I'm listening to uh, a little bit of a mixture of Stevie Nicks and Gene Carter Cash. Now here you go again, you say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Igniting, inspiring, and evoking the fire within. You're listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Fire. Hello, people, and welcome to episode number eight of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Today, I've got a great friend and mentor on. She is the CEO and founder of the Public Speakers Association. She is a strategist for those speakers who want to launch themselves into their careers. She is Miss Tanya Hoffman. Tanya, how are you today? Fabulous. So great to be here. It, it, it really, really is. And, and, and just to start right off, uh, Tanya is someone who has helped me, helped launch me into my speaking career. So again, all of the great things about this podcast, um, you can thank a lot, uh, give a lot of thanks to Tanya for that. <laughs> well, you you had the awesome sauce. You were just needing to stir it up a little bit. <laughs> That's right. Oh, the awesome sauce. You do your little figure eights of the awesome sauce, and you've you, you've got you've got me going. So, um, <laughs> with that, let, let's dig right into it. Question for you is: How did the Public Speakers Association start, and what has it developed into today? Well. You know, there's one button that if you push it with me, <laughs> I'm going to react. And that's the elitist button. And I had, you know, been going around speaking and really starting to really ramp up my speaking career. And I was doing really, really well. And I thought, you know, I should join, you know, a, a local chapter of some speaking organization. So I went to a local one that's pretty well known. And was going to join, and the lady was like, well, Tanya, you're not a professional speaker. Oh. And that's all it took for me to go, what? I'm running around the world, speaking internationally, speaking all over the place, and I make a hell of a lot more money than you do. So <laughs> that's me not professional. <laughs> so when she said that, you know, I was like, well, if she's treating me that way, because I knew these people for a long time, you know, and they had their click, and I get it. But I didn't want them to treat other people that are just really getting started, because I truly believe that everyone has a voice and a purpose on this planet to go help somebody else. And so now the BSA is growing. This is going into our fifth year now, um, and we're already, we're about to open up a chapter in Malaysia. We've got clients really all over the world so i'm really excited about growth this year wow that's malaysia that is outstanding i mean that would would lead me into the, the next question is there is absolutely no grass under your feet i'm every time i, I get in touch with you, you are traveling somewhere you are not in your home state of texas as an estimation tanya 
See, in the last calendar year, do you know how many miles you've traveled? <laughs> I have no idea. No idea? I can't even remember what I did yesterday, so I can't even imagine how many. <laughs> that, that, that's true. I'm just, you, you you work so hard. You, you're, you're focused on now and today. And I can recall, I don't know how long this this was ago. I don't know if we were on a blab together. We talked about New Year's resolutions, and you told me, I asked you, what was your res- New Year's resolution? And you said, Fox, I don't want to recognize, recognize myself from the year before. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I made that. And people are like, what? I always tell people, I've got the same, you know, kind of goal every year. And people are like, that must be a sucky goal if you can never change it. I'm like, well, I just don't want to look at myself the year before it and say I didn't do anything, you know, that I didn't accomplish anything, that I didn't personally grow. So my goal every year is to look back at myself and not recognize myself, which means I have got to get myself going and pushing and and really stretching myself because we still run into fears. We still run into issues that we're like, what? I thought I was over all that. (laughs) Right, right. And, 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 you know, you, you mentioned like you not wanting uh, to see people struggle and wanting them to change. I, I'm telling people, Tanya is someone who, who if you just step out there, if you, for, for me, just making that phone call, that initial email, she will, she'll be right there for you. Um, a couple of years back, I got an email from my sister and she said, Fox, you know, I found this public speakers association online. You should try and be a part of it. And I think that night I put an email out. I didn't, I didn't get an email back. I got a phone call from you, Tanya back. Do you recall that? No, but it sounds like me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just what you do. You make it very, very, um, very, very personal. Uh, You're personable and you make it very personal um, for everybody. It's, it's, it's been outstanding for me. Um, You know, I, I had, I asked you about quotes, and you, you you said, and I've heard you speak a bunch of times. You're, you're not a quote person, but I do find you very quotable. So to quote to to, to quote you, okay, uh, quote: I've had to get over having cancer, and have had to get over being robbed and tied up when I was six months pregnant. Dot dot dot. And those are the thing. Those are the nice things about me. And when, I mean, I heard that, um, I, I knew you were somebody special. Could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, you know, we it's called life. Yeah. <laughs> and we all go through usually something traumatic. You know, a, a friend of mine, she lost her job, and that was the most traumatic thing that she had ever gone through. And I said, don't devalue what you go through because it is your story right you know i've gone through pretty horrific things and i talk about them when it's appropriate because sometimes people need to hear that others have gone through something very similar to them um but you know it's not something that i dwell on so when you know i it's almost too flippant nowadays you know like yeah you know i've gone through cancer and you know i've been robbed and tied up when i was six months pregnant and you know that was a good thing so let's move on <laughs> right it's about, about you turning the page yeah uh, now i just found that I found that fascinating it also shows the part of you that that really strives to make an impact on other people you forget about yourself and so people like me and, and many others, of course, will never forget you. Well, you know, I mean, look at yourself. I mean, you're an inspiration to me. You know, some people like you and Drew Hunthausen, who's yeah. blind and, and mostly deaf and what he's able to do. I mean, I have one of my best friends is paraplegic, you know, and I look at people that struggle physically and then I've got people that I know that struggle emotionally mm-hmm. or mentally. And we all have issues. It's just, do we dwell on it? And that's what I love about you is you don't dwell on it. You embrace it and say, okay, yeah, this is me. Sorry. You know, this is just what's going on. Yeah, I can't hide it. <laughs> and, yeah, and, you know, it is what it is. So let's move on. Let's, you know, handle it and, and do something fabulous. 
And you, I mean, you, you have two choices. And yeah, and that, that's the way that I look at it. I, I, I look at the tons of people in, in this world that, that have it tougher than I do for, for tons of reasons. So therefore, and in, in a lot of my talks, you know, tying my right shoe, it's not that big of a deal anymore. Some people, you know, <laughs> don't, don't have any right shoe to tie. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, there's, we could go on and on and on and on about this, you know, numbers wise. I, I saw this number of, uh, two days ago, the 85 richest people in the world are richer than the, the three billion poorest people in the world. So like you said, um, let's, let's get on with our lives and try to help people that are less fortunate than we are. Exactly. Mm, period. Exactly. Period. It's a lot more fun that way anyways. <laughs> it, 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 it really is. It really is. Now, again, back to the quotes. I, I know you don't like quotes, but you're a very quotable person. You did. You are a fan of this quote. Life is not about finding yourself. It's about creating yourself. Could you speak to that a little yeah. bit? So I saw, that's an actual quote. Um, I read it on a gift card. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that, yeah, I saw it at Whole Foods uh, Market one day. And I was walking through it, and it was it jumped out. You know, sometimes things just jump out at you. And I read this card, and I'm like, oh, life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Well, all these years I've been trying to figure out who I was, find out who Tanya's supposed to be, versus, well, dang it, let me just go create who I want to be. And that was a very pivotal moment. Um, for me to say, stop focusing on the past, focus on what you want the future to actually be. What do you want your business to look like? What do you want your relationships to look like? If you're struggling with your children or your spouse or your best friend or your mother or whoever, what kind of relationship do you actually want it to be? And then go create it because a lot of times we're just standing in our own way. We are, and it, it speaks a lot to goal setting. Before you go out and do it, set a clear goal. Identify the problem and set a clear goal. I like it. Um, d about how long ago did, did you read that at, at Whole Foods? Do you have any idea? Yeah, it was about 2003, 2004, something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're, we're talking thir 13 or so years ago. Speaking along the same lines, uh, about two years ago, I went to Chipotle to get some food. And on the bag that contained my food, it had a little write-up that was um, entitled, A Two-Minute Case for Optimism. And I thought, wow, what a great um, little lesson I could teach um, 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 to my classes as a school teacher. So if you keep your eyes open, yeah. inspiration is out there. And of course, in our cases, at, at food markets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who, who, would, who, would have, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Tanya, I, always part of the podcast here, uh, of the What's Your Inspiration podcast, we play a little game called Who, Which, and Where. So these quotes or one-liners are from people that you know, but I like to, you, for you to guess uh, who said them. Are you ready? Uh-oh, okay. <laughs> uh -oh, okay. That's what a lot of people say. The, the, at this point, but trust me, I'm, I'm willing to guess you probably get two out of three correct. Maybe all three. <laughs> so here we go. It, this is somebody we both know, Tanya. We both know. Um, <laughs> you probably more than me, but um, he's, he's someone I, I hold in high regard, just like you. And the quote goes, goes like this. Why would people try to act like someone they're not when they are designed to be different. That's BS, bad strategy. Who said that? Um, good question. Probably someone like Scott Schilling or someone like that. You are absolutely correct, Tanya. It's indeed Scott Schilling. <laughs> it's indeed Scott Schilling. Um, TV host, uh, TV show host of uh, Talking with Giants, great uh, author and speaker, Scott Schilling, um, someone who this summer at, at the uh, 
PSA conference in Palm Springs definitely inspired me. Yeah, he's a great friend of mine. He's just incredible. I mean, I I just remember him. He, to me, great speaker, um, and he's great because during any one that he gives or any one that I've watched and, and the one that I saw, he goes through all of the emotions. He he makes you laugh. He makes you cry. He makes you think. And he goes through them with you. And, you know, it was it, it was very hot out there in Palm Springs this summer, but we're, we're inside in the hotel and, and, and it's climate controlled. But um, he brought so much energy that I can recall him just being drenched in sweat after his speech. And um, that's just an image that I really, really respect. So <laughs> Scott Schilling just covered in sweat. Okay. Next one. You, 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 <laughs> back, more, back to what, which, and where. Uh, the next one, is, next one, you know this person, Tanya. Who wrote this? Every, every day they approach with conviction, there is nothing they know more than friction. That sounds like you. It is. Tanya, you are two for two. <laughs> two for two. It is indeed a little quote um, from my book. Uh, and come, it's called, it comes down to the character of the man. That's the name of the poem from my book, Letter Kindling, um, that I was uh, fortunate enough, you, you allow me the time to speak at the conference this uh, this summer, and that was one of one of my lines in the speech. So, two for two, yes, Tanya. You're brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, thank you. Again, you, what you do for everyone in the PSA, you, you give us a platform to um, to realize ourselves, uh, is really how I, I think about it. Two for two. You, 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 you might be the first uh, guest on the What's Your Inspiration podcast that could be three for three. <laughs> you, Yay! You, you, you very might. I, I'm not surprised, Tanya, because you are definitely fabulous, and you know that. <laughs> so and this might be the easiest one of them all. Uh, Tanya, who calls themselves, who has, who has referred to themselves as, quote, a recovering introvert? Me. <laughs> That's absolutely you. So why do you do that? Because I was such an introvert, you know, because of my past and having such horrific things go on in my past, I just withdrew within myself. And um, one day I realized that I had to start getting out of this introverted, you know, me-centric, you know, sit in the corner and wait for things to happen in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. And because I was missing out on life, I had to, to become an extroverted type of person, which just means that I just had to go out and start talking to people. And it was brilliant. And I'm so glad that I pushed myself. And now I'm a recovering introvert. <laughs> Tanya, I think you are, you are fully recovered. Not completely. Every once in a while, I'll find myself still in a corner. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Get out there. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, I, I, I struggle with that um, pretty much every day. But I guess I'm a recovering introvert as well. I don't know. You, you've helped me discover myself that way. Yeah, I mean, you're on a podcast, so, you know, you're, you're getting there. <laughs> okay. I, it's, it's, this is very real. This podcast is very real. You're, you're right. You're right. And and. Another question, Tanya, and you again. You are th you the first contestant, three for three in what, which, and where? Outstanding. Yay! Yay. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Th this next question, and it, you've you've basically answered it, but and I'll, I'll ask it again. Was there any one moment that really launched you into your um, your successful speaking career as it is today? You know, I really, there were so many, you know, kind of typical moments, but I think the one that really set me off was that I was in a networking group, a business networking group, and um, I was watching people coming in. I was sitting over in the corner, sitting down, not talking to anybody. And I watched this woman named Susan walk in, and she looked not too different from me, and 
she seemed very nice. And when she walked in, people jumped up and ran over to her and hugged her and gave her referrals and was so happy to see her. And at that moment, that's when the whole, I needed to make who I want to be come into reality. Mm. And she would stand at the front and, and do a little spiel and do her great elevator pitch. And I thought, if she could do it, and she didn't seem that much different than me, that I must be able to do it as well. And that set me off on my journey of, you know, getting over the gazillion fears I had <laughs> and, and moving myself into the direction I am today. Tanya, it's a great direction. And you give, I, I know you know this, but you give, you've given thousands of people direction, including me. Um, so I want to say thank you very much um, for for being a great friend, a great mentor, and just doing it in, in your subtle way, just leading people down that right path. Thank you very much. Oh, it's 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 my whole pleasure in life is to help people and to see people really achieve because, I mean, look how inspiring you are and you're going out there and and doing not only what you love, but inspiring others to do what they love as well. Lord knows I'm trying. Lord knows I'm trying. <laughs> so, so. Listen, Tanya has a bunch of books out. And, and please, Tanya, feel, feel free to correct me. Uh, change Your World So You Can Change The World. 25 Brilliant Speakers. A great one. Own Your Own Fabulousness. Soar to, <laughs> soar to Success. And A Client a day the coffee shop way to to end yeah. up to end up here tanya um do you want to speak to those at all any of those books well a client a day the coffee shop way was my first one my full um all me one um the last one i did was own your fabulousness which is a tip book that i did um all the other ones are compilation books where i've got a chapter in them and what I want to say about books <laughs> yes. is don't get so caught up in, you know, the book part. You know, get caught up in the words that you choose and just get it done. Because when it comes down to it, you really have no idea who's going to be reading that book and how you're going to help change their life. I ran into a guy just the other day at Starbucks. And he was sitting next to me, and he turned over, and he says, oh, my gosh, I just read your book. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't know this guy from Adam. <laughs> so you just don't know who it is that you're going to change a perspective, a look. And even speaking, you know, you just don't know how you're going to help somebody today. Um, so get out of your own way and just do it. I like it. Get out of your own way and just flat out do it. Tanya, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for being on here. Um, this is out. This has been outstanding. As we we end up here, two two things. How can people get in touch with you? And who would you like to hear on uh, my next podcast? Oh, let's see. Probably um, to get a hold of me, go to public. Speakers with an S association, all spelled out, dot com. And um, there's a contact us, you know, info on there. So you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, and the person for your next event, oh, Scott Schilling would be so much fun on your event. So right. um, if you don't already have his contact, you know, I, you know, I can help you with that. <laughs> well, thank you, Tanya. I mean, that's a. Reaching for the stars, definitely. This was reaching for the stars too. But if I could get you, I think we could get Scott. I think that's a great, uh, great choice. Yes. <laughs> so. Tanya, thank you so much again. It's been a blast. Could I have you back on at some point? You betcha. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much, Tanya. Okay, people. That is thank the you. that will wrap up the end of the eighth. What's your inspiration podcast? Tanya and I will talk at you all later. Take good care. 
you have been listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. Because impact on each other is the greatest currency you could ever have. The early was a day-to-day struggle. It went from bad to worse and the pain doubled. Never far from imminent danger from the tough and unforgiving I was no stranger. Closure to me seemed impossible, but toughness I had that, and it was plentiful. So I turned my pain and inspiration, and every day I gave it a game face salutation. Hello, tough beginnings. You're a pit stop to a happy life, because what's Victory Highway without some struggle and strife?